Hello everyone, this is my run on 6 Warrior Quest Area 4. I actually have two different runs that I've used, both of them are zero turns. And I was thinking of going with this run as my first run because it further showcases the power of FR Echoes. And what better way to use FR Echoes than a 6 Warrior event? In this event, I will be using Neon's Force Echoes, I'll be using Terra Force Echoes. I will be using Seven's Force Echoes. I will be using Garnet's Force Echo. And I wanted to also use Cloud of Darkness's Force Echo, but unfortunately, the enemies died before I could do so. The good thing about this is that it's very flexible on whose Force Echoes you bring. So, for example, if you don't have Neon's Force Echo, you could bring Vivi or Warrior of Light. Or whoever else that you have Force Echo on. Because really the only action that they take the entire fight is just using Force Echo and nothing else. The only character that's I guess really needed here is Penelo since I'm using her Force Time as the main force. As well as 7, mainly because with 7 it allows me to do a 0 turn run. If you are not really fast about the turn count, then 7 isn't mandatory at all, you can replace her with any other character that you have her Force Echoes on. I would recommend to bring Garnet if you have her Force Echo, mainly also because Garnet does provide a little bit more damage in terms of, in terms of her aura supports and her off turn damage every 4 turns. I would also recommend bringing Terra if you have her Force Echoes, mainly because you can use one LD with Terra inside summon mode and this allows you to use both her Force Echo for free since they are instant turn. Having said that, both Garnet and Terra are also optional, you should be able to get the same strategy going with other Force Echoes. Of particular note, I want to mention Vivi's Force Echo if you did pull for Vivi. His Force will do a little bit more damage compared to everyone else because his Force Echo will also trigger his Embers of Darkness, full up attack and that deals a little bit more bonus damage, especially when you are at 999% Force Bonus. The strategy here is very simple. What I did here is since I have 7, it is reset until I have 7 start first. Every other party order is irrelevant because at the start, I swap 7 out for Terra and I use the Seed Rain's LD call to manipulate the turn order, so you only need 7 to start first. Line up the turns so that Penelo acts after 7, and then I took the opportunity to also set up Garnet's BT+, plus since it is a free action, and use the call ability on Garnet. Now one very very important thing, the key to this is having the Raijin LD call, because the superior knight when it has the green aura, will counter attack you for some damage but if you debuff it with the Raging LD call at the start of the fight then all its counters are guaranteed to deal zero damage to you so you can just forget about that mechanic once Terra and Garnet has been has used their call abilities I should say then you can just have 7 pass a turn to Penelo by using LD into Bondage Whip both of which will not increase the turn count. From here on Penelo's turn, you know the drill. Just spin S1, S2 until you hit 100% force gauge, and then go into force time and BT+. I gave Penelo the Luna Freya LD call, just to keep the turn count at zero. I would recommend that if you don't have the Luna Freya LD call, don't worry about it. Just go into force time with Penelo, and then just spin to 99%. Don't worry about the BT plus aura, it's not needed for this strategy. By doing that without the Lunar Fire Audi call, it will be a plus 1 turn count instead of 0 turns, and that's really the only difference. From here, just spin all the way to 999%. Maybe slightly before that is fine, but you want to be as high as possible. Doesn't really matter if you are low on turns in the force time because the rest of the fight is just spamming force echoes and as you guys know using force echo will not, will not reduce the force time turn count anyway so it doesn't matter 
whether you are at two turns or three turns. I would recommend to have at least one turn of force time in reserve so that you can use it for Terra LD. At 999% force time bonus, Penelo's job is done and she's not needed anymore. Pop Brother Summon for some sweet damage and swap Penelo out for Garnet first. Here I use Garnet's Force Echo first so that she remains in the field and her support auras and BT plus aura will benefit the rest of the Force Echoes that you will be using. Next up is Neon, and here really, Neon isn't mandatory at all. Neon benefited from the Luna Freya LD call, so she has 2 turns, so you can use 2 Force Echoes here. If you don't have the Quick Prayer up on Neon, she can only use 1, in which case then you just move on to the next character. And essentially here, you're just going Musical Chess or Round Robin or whatever you want to call it, and just rotate amongst all your Echoes and just use them sequentially. Try to fit in as many as you can inside summon mode because this is where they are all free. What you want to do is save Terra's Force Echo for last and use it, or I should say bring her in on the final turn of summon mode so that she can LD into multiple free turns after summon mode ends. Final turn in summon mode, so this is where Terra comes in. It's ideal here because after using LD with Terra, all her other turns are free turns. So you can you know use for example FR FR into BT plus to close out the fight. And right here the bosses are low enough anyway. Keep in mind that I also have Cloud of Darkness in reserve. I haven't even used her at all. But at this point, if I bring her in, I will increase the turn count. Luckily, it's not needed since Terra is enough to finish off the fight. And that's it. I hope this video has been helpful. And if you enjoyed the content, do leave a like, comment and subscribe because it really helps a lot. Till then, I'll see you guys in the next Shinryu fight. Bye!